Physical activity is not an indicator or a corrector of posture. I'm Dr. Joshua Fink. I'd like to tell you a story about the patients that I've had in this practice the last two or three years that report to me, hey, I'm active, I'm doing what I want, I'm hiking, I'm playing soccer, I'm throwing footballs, and yet their posture is horrible. Their head is two or three inches in front of their body, it compromises their grip, it compromises their pulmonary function, it compromises their balance. As we get older, poor posture compromises our ability to live independently. It's an indicator for osteoarthritis. It seems like we should be able to exercise our way out of that. We should be able to be active enough to protect our spines, and yet, it's not the case. I'm gonna talk about why that is. I'm gonna tell you a story about how we're gonna fix that. Stay with me. Great example, mom comes into the practice last week. She's got a 10 year old with her. This kid from the side, his head, his neck, posture's off by about two and a half inches. His functional testing's off, his pulmonary function's lower than when it's supposed to be. She shows me a picture of this young man at eight years old. His back is perfectly fine. His spine is perfect. Here's the kicker. This kid does everything. This kid does karate. This kid does hockey. This kid plays soccer. This kid hikes. He's always outside. He's always doing something. And yet, his posture has changed and she's deeply concerned. And for the right reasons. What if this continues, she says. I see the same thing happen to my 25 year olds and to my 40 year olds, to my 50 year olds. Now granted, the amount of time from here to here is a little bit different, but the results are the same. Her question is the same as their question, is the same as my question. How is it that active people have poor posture? And by being more active, why can't we fix the postural changes that we're all undergoing? The answer is in a really great meta-analysis that was conducted last year. And we're gonna talk about it for just a second, okay? Okay, so the study that I wanna to reference today. Association between physical activity and body posture a systematic review and meta-analysis. How much data did they have? They had close to 16,000 people involved in 16 cross-sectional studies, everything from 1996 all the way to 2022. They had young men, they had young women, they had older men, older women. They had stuff from Iran, they had stuff from South America, from Europe, from America. A lot of studies all over, right? They did their best to include everything and then use their regressions to bias that information out, right? Or remove bias. So the important stuff that we want to talk about from these studies, there's two points. The first one, when they included a lower number of studies, they were specifically looking for correlation and they managed to find some through the use of what's called a forest graph. And so when we talk about forest graph or forest plotting, we take our line and then our studies for and against go on each side of the line and we just correlate that with a, a bigger analysis. And so in the two spots that they did this, they found one had a weekly positive, meaning more studies were for posture and physical activity. And on the other side, the studies were against it. And so when they tried to correlate that data again, they used a little bit different of an analysis they found that the information just wasn't as there. The forest graph didn't plot exactly the same. The deal with this is that when you go and look at physical activity, holy cow, that's a lot of different stuff. High, moderate, and low physical activity, right? Are they really, really active? Are they kind of active? That's one thing. And then when we look at posture, what are we talking about? Well, they actually did a good job of correcting for all of that. And in the second set of data, they see it real clearly. There's not some smoking gun, some 100%, hey, this is it. Physical activity is going to save you. It's not there, guys. So if we're going to fix our posture, we have to train posture. We can't just go out and get active. Although in the great big scheme of things, you know it's physical activity that's going to save you, right? There's study upon study upon study that talks about increasing physical activity as one of the best levers that we can pull for staying on this planet and staying healthy for as long as possible. Why doesn't posture directly correlate with physical activity? What is going on there, right? Let's talk about it. 
Okay, so that's pretty apocalyptic, right? Physical activity fixes so many things. It's so important for us and for these young people we're in charge of. But it doesn't necessarily fix our posture. Yes, there's some weak associations, but man, that's not what we're going to build our health care on, right? What are we going to do? The reason why we have changes in posture is because we spend so much more time doing this post-COVID, right? We get our information from smartphones, we get our information from last laptops, not desktops, not big TVs. Our information centers are down here. We all day long are telling our brain that that's the position we want. It's not a question of muscle, is it? The posterior cingulate gyrus, the cerebellum, these areas of the brain that are responsible for how we hold our bodies, those areas are getting information from the spinal cord, from mechanoreceptors, telling them, this is what we want, this is what we want. We're not going to fix that just by adding in muscle. We have to specifically train our brains to reset our posture. Get it? It's not just muscle. It's not just physical activity. Does that help? Probably. Is it super important? Absolutely. But if you're going to fix your posture, if you're going to maintain it, you have to train it. How are we going to do that? With our holy trinity in this office of spinal postural development and correction. Okay. Physical activity is not going to save us when it comes to just posture. It's crazy to even think that that's the case. Because every other time we talk about physical activity, we're super pumped about it, right? When our patients come in, they're like, yeah, I walked an extra mile. We do backflips. Because physical activity, in almost every other case, it's the key to you staying healthy, right? What you're going to be able to do when you're physically active trumps almost everything else. The problem is that according to this round of research, it doesn't fix your posture. So, we're going to do the things that fix posture. And those things come from stimulating the brain, not necessarily moving weight. There's three components to this. The first one is going to be stretching, then strengthening, and then traction. And that's the way we've always done it in the office. We've gotten some pretty great results so far. So when I talk about stretching, what I want to talk about, in particular this area, stretching the upper chest, stretching the neck, and the very simple basic one that we love everyone to do is a wall angel. And so wall angels are where you have your elbows, your wrists, your shoulders, the back of your head, and your bottom all on the wall at the same time. Some people like to elevate their arms and hands. Some people like to make uh, 90 degrees and do all these elaborate things. All of that's wonderful. The most important thing is you get all of those components on the wall. You're training your brain that this is the correct posture. Because when you're not doing that, every other time you're training your brain that it's the other way, right? That this is going on. And so it's not a function of muscle. It's a function of neurological stimulus. That's why physical activity isn't going to be able to save us here. And once you get that, it makes sense, right? So you're going to do that every day. You do it three times a day, 15 seconds. If you've watched all of our other videos, we talk about movement breaks. That's exactly what we're talking about. Being able to do a wall angel. So. First we stretch, then we strengthen. So how do we strengthen? Any way you want. You can row, you can do what are called Y stretches. You can find yourself a red band like this young person has here. Take that band, you're gonna use your arms and hands to pull that band apart, and that is going to activate the muscles in your upper back. What we're trying to do is turn them on and get them going. By stretching here and strengthening here, we have our two big components, right? The third one is traction. Traction is a rolled up towel. Go like this with your hand, get a towel that fits in there, and lay on it right here, the top of your back. You lay on traction every single day. Start off at like 10 minutes, and then up it to where you get to 15, but go really slow. We don't want to get any headaches. We want to go nice and slow. We want to do this every single day. You can stop doing these exercises when you no longer use your smartphone, okay? But if you still have them, then you're still gonna do these exercises. That's the way it's going to work because it's the only way you're gonna be able to counter train the stimulus, all right? So, if you think this is pretty cool, give us a like, give us a follow, we'll put more of this content out. Otherwise, we will see you in the office, okay? Bye.